We have not yet followed up on this clue. I believe it comes from India. India awaits, and I'm ready. I'll use every procedure in the book till I find Carmen San Diego. I know she's there. I've got a gut feeling. Well, I've got a gut feeling too, but I think it's the airline food. When we've searched this area for signs of the Egyptian Senate table, I want to get back to New Delhi. Why? The capital of a country isn't the only cool place to hang. I'd rather visit Mumbai, which was called Bombay the last time I was here. You know, Bollywood. Bollywood? Yeah. They call it that because of all the movies made there. So let's talk to this gentleman. Oh my goodness, it's you two again. The secret spy agents, right? I've been keeping my eyes peeled since you left. For suspicious persons, you know. I have very helpful information for you. Really? Well, great. That tall lady in red you mentioned before. I have seen her yesterday. I was very sneaky. She dropped a piece of paper, and I got it right here. She did not suspect a thing. Thank you so much. I think you'll make a great secret agent someday. I do not have anything else for you, but I will be keeping my eyes peeled. But what is this thing? Some sort of instructions? Hmm, looks like Egyptian hieroglyphs. Let's go back to Egypt, shall we? Did you know that soccer is the most popular sport in Egypt? Soccer's the most popular sport practically everywhere. But I thought camel racing would be the big thing here. Actually, it is a big thing. And horses. Don't forget horses. Oh, that's right. You do know all about horses. I really admire the Egyptians' irrigation systems. It's so cool how they manage to get water from the Nile to flow into the desert for farming. Well, the Nile is the longest river in the world. But even with all that water, Egypt still has to import two-thirds of its food supply. Let's see, it was over here? No, it was not. It was over here. These Egyptian hieroglyphs look like they formed some kind of puzzle. You're right. Let's follow these instructions and see what happens. My hunch is that we'll need to find the exact matches for these symbols on the clue and in the right order. Okay, so sometimes they need to be read from right to left. So I'm going to try right to left first. So next we find this bird. That's the bird, but it looks like it's facing uh, the wrong direction. Ah, here, here we go, here we go. Then these two things. Oh, that looks close, but that's not quite it. And then this one. Oh, is that not it? Okay, well in that case, let's do it in uh, from left to right. This is giving us a special sound effect every time I uh, click on the correct answer. Therefore, I think it's supposed to be left to right. So, where is that bird? I found it once, I can find it again. No, not you. Hmm. No. Gosh, I don't know why this is so difficult. <laughs> um, here it is! And then the H was here. Uh, oh wait, I already found the H. Um, so it's eyeball, eyeball, it's eyeball, this one. An electronic clue behind ancient hieroglyphs? Obviously, this was put here recently. And that design links it to Carmen San Diego. Yeehaw! Yep. I believe that will help us get into uh, the Antarctica area. You know, I had no idea that Antarctica was as large as it is. It's one-tenth of the world's land. That's big. Really big. Really, really big. Really, really, wow. really big. Wow, all this snow. If it weren't for chasing Carmen, I'd hit the slopes. I packed my board. You'd be snowboarding the Earth's largest desert. Yes, and snowfall on Antarctica's highest plateau is equal to the rainfall in Africa's Sahara Desert. Not a lot. Alright, so we're 
over here. Checking out this. Wow, this looks like some kind of crazy lock scheme. Yeah, it's got Carmen Sandiego's name all over it. But I think we're missing some clues. We need to search around some more. Oh no, I can't interact with this puzzle yet because we're missing a clue somewhere. Chief, where's the missing clue? Hot tip, visit the store near Sydney Harbor. You never know what someone may leave lying around. Sydney Harbor, as in Australia? Australia. It always blows my mind to think that back in the days of colonialism, like what, 1770? Someone like Captain James Cook could just sail to Australia and claim the whole East Coast for Britain. I know. Australia only won independence in 1901. Apparently, the government is finally now working to help the native Aboriginal peoples regain title to some of their lands. Hey, all right. This part of Australia is a happening kind of place. Sailing, soccer, restaurants, you name it. A lot of Australians must agree with you, because more than 80% of them live here on the southeast coast, in cities like Sydney or Canberra, the capital. Most of the rest of Australia is desert. Well, I want to take a look around this souvenir shop a bit. Maybe I can find a memento to take back to the States. Who knows? We may even pick up a clue or two. I see a secret agent right here. It's very hard to miss. Someone's been doodling here, and look what was on that person's mind. All solved except for that one word. Hmm. From the looks of this clue, I'll bet we can find the answer somewhere around here. Let's hang on to it. Hmm. I think the answer is platypus. The Australian platypus is certainly unique for a mammal. Not only does it have a beak and webbed feet, it lays eggs. Oh, and I just remembered. The male has poisonous spurs behind each ankle. That's it. Mr. Trivia does it again. The solution to the missing word in the crossword puzzle. I'll jot down that word. So, as, uh, as, as, uh, let me check out all this stuff here in Australia first, but as you can probably guess, that lines up with the puzzle we saw in Antarctica. Cool. Rocks. One of the reasons Australia is prosperous is its large deposits of coal, iron ore, gold, and other minerals. Do you think I should get some for the folks back home? Uh, why don't you shop around some more? The Aborigines had lived in Australia for thousands of years before European settlers first arrived in Sydney Cove a little over 200 years ago. The Aborigines had lived in the famous Sydney Opera House, was designed to resemble the sails of a ship. Carmen and I saw a performance there once. Unforgettable. Hey, I know what that is. Boomerangs are used by some Aborigines for hunting. A didgeridoo. A didgeridoo what? Didgeridoo. It's an aboriginal musical instrument. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks koalas are so cute, but they're not as friendly as they look. You're right on that one, Hawkins. Australia is called the land down under because it's below the equator. It's the only country in the world to occupy an entire continent. Pretty cool, huh, Jules? Okay. Antarctica. Nice clouds. Check it out. Can't you see I'm meditating? If we find a clue, I'll store it in my vest for safekeeping. Right. Anything could be important for us. Let's solve that puzzle. Wow. This looks like some kind of crazy lock scheme. Yeah. It's got Carmen Sandiego's name all this over is it. Be difficult. Well, okay. let's see if we can figure it out. It looks like we've got all the pieces we need. Yeah. To set the number on the lock for the letter P in platypus, it looks like we need to find the letter P at the bottom of the chessboard, and then look at which row the chess piece is in. Whoa. Okay, so P is always at three. So how do we interact with that? Okay, so let's P and go three. And then P is 3, so uh, U is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, U is always 6. And then 
Uh, T was 8. Looks like S is 2. And L is 1. A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A is 5. And then Y is 4. Tricky. Hey, this is quite a place. It's actually a bit warmer down here than on the surface. Shh. Let's keep our eyes peeled and our ears open. Carmen could be down here too.